Thanks to my good man, Kimo, for being a patron. If you want tons of exclusive RPG content, join now as a patron today. What is up, RPG nerds? In this video, we will be talking about Final Fantasy IV The After Years and reviewing it. I already reviewed the original Final Fantasy IV, which I'll drop a link down below if you are interested in that. But yeah, let's get right into this. So Final Fantasy IV The After Years allows the player to return to the enchanting world of Final Fantasy IV, a realm steeped in nostalgia and adventure. The sequel takes you beyond the original tale, introducing new characters, challenges, and dungeons to unravel. In this review, I, Brighton Nelson, will explore the battle system's strength and weaknesses, delve into the intricacies of the story, appreciate the art and music that breathes life into this game, and share my opinions about the game's diverse cast of characters. Now, without further ado, I present to you a Final Fantasy IV The After Years review, derivative, but a welcome surprise nonetheless. Alright, let's start with the battle system, as I always do. And I'm going to give the battle system an 8 out of 10 in the after years. This game is a pretty fantastic battle system when you think about it. Because, you know, there are some cool things about this game that a lot of people aren't talking too much about. But I'm just going to mostly talk about that in the customization system portion of this video but i do have a couple things to say that do make this atb battle system a bit more special first of all i love the five playable characters as i said in my final fantasy 4 review games like final fantasy 4 final fantasy dimensions lost odyssey blue dragon with their five characters or like final fantasy 10 and dragon quest 11 they switch characters in battle with like sweet sakodin suikoden suikoden whatever the Frick you want to call it with like the six characters like i love when games give you big character parties and this is a great example i like the five characters i think five characters is really my favorite number it's not too much but it's not like three like three is so bad anyway more rpgs need this amount of characters also this game literally has 22 permanently playable characters and 30 total playable characters that's absurd there's so much variety i will say i do have a couple problems with the battle system because the, you get all these characters but you don't get them all together until the crystals chapter which needed to be at least triple the length and it needed an actually good story but that's for the next section. But anyway, it just there could have been so much more experimentation if the crystals chapter is longer, if there were harder challenges, if there was more. So if the whole party was together, I consider giving this probably a nine. But as is, without enough time to truly experiment with the battle system, I can't place it any higher than a eight. All right. So now let's talk about the story, which I'm going to give a six out of ten. On its own merits, each of these tales in Final Fantasy IV is a good time. Like, I'm not complaining. There's no really big, glaring problems here. The overarching plot, though, is mediocre. Enough to warrant a game, I guess, but not anything too special. For a follow-up to the game that really started storytelling in RPGs, this is really disappointing. But yeah, I'll get into that more. But yeah, I mean, the plot here isn't horrible. Like, it could be worse. I mean, I still don't think it's even as good as Final Fantasy 1, which is a little embarrassing, but that is the case. And I think it's okay. The creator plot is intriguing, but not nearly as intriguing as, like, Golbez was. I mean, the game has good moments, like the airship crash and Theodore's tale, Ursula's coming of age story, Nyong's tale, Leonora becoming a mage in Palum's tale, Kane becoming a holy dragoon in his tale, etc., but, I mean, the moments in this game are so much better than the sum of their parts. I mean, really, if you think about it, I could probably give the individual good moments like 7.5 out of 10. But really, I'm going to put this low because it just loses so many points for being underwhelming and, as much as I hate to say it, pretty offensive. Because this is a sequel to Final Fantasy IV, with, which has an awesome story and really revolutionized storytelling. It would have been a game, like, this game 
could have had like chapters that set up for a solid 30 40 hour story or we could have at least i don't know because the problem when you have a game with this many playable characters you want to actually be able to use them all together and you in the crystal story like if we could have had all these characters come together we could really have explored the emotions and new lives of the characters in a way just as grand and compelling as the original final fantasy 4 i mean yes we can keep the tales but we need to have some sort of like central plot that really makes it good i mean i don't expect every single character to be in like really invested in one another when there's 22 of them but really they did a good job of setting up the characters they just underutilized them in the story a story exploring the emotions and new lives of characters would have been awesome we could have scrapped the creator's story and come up with something much more and i mean yeah the chapters i think the individual chapters rehashing the previous game playing homage to the previous game hitting some of the same plot beats for nostalgia that would have worked for me like i'm okay with fighting dad bomb i'm okay with going back through the underground waterway but this time with palm and porum but if that were just like an intro to the game the tales were just an intro like this could have been a grand tale the main cast needed a lot more time together developing alongside one another just imagine how the game could have been if gobez and harley became friends if luca and sukunoa became like besties and Izayoi and Rydia just became like, I don't even know. Like, what if they became like, had like a sisterly bond that was never broken? Like, just imagine if they fully utilized these characters and allowed for a grand tale. Because, I mean, games like Sukoden, Suikoden, Suikoden, I'm just, I'm not going to pretend like, or like Chrono Cross that have good stories, fantastic, fantastic stories with huge amounts of characters that I think this game could have done it too. Like a sequel to the game that literally started storytelling in RPGs, one of the greatest Final Fantasy games ever created, could have made a good story. But really, like it, this could have been one of the best games in the series if they had created a story even better than the first game. If they had given the characters enough time to be together and enough time to be together at least i mean for battles too like that was another big problem i just there's so much missed potential in this game and giving it a six is honestly a little bit like exaggerating like i could have given it worse because it's so disappointing that final fantasy 4 fans across the globe were stoked to see their favorite characters come back in another fantastic adventure and there just wasn't that much here. Like, if we we're going to return to Final Fantasy IV, let's do it and make it one of the best games in the series. But sadly, that is not the case here. It's just, this storytelling was not great. And I don't hate it. I'm not too mad at it. I'm just disappointed at it. Like a mother after her son steals a Koopo nut from the cookie jar. All right. The music in Final Fantasy IV, The After Years, just like I said in my Final Fantasy IV review... I'm not a huge Final Fantasy IV music guy. I mean, we get some new tracks here, which I'm not complaining about. That's always nice, I guess. It's a solid enough time to be able to have a new, couple new tracks. But in the end, like, I'm not a huge Final Fantasy IV um, type of guy in terms of the music. I just have never really resonated with the music all that much. I mean, there are amazing tracks like Red Wings, Rydia's theme, Theme of Love, some of the moon music, Golbez's themes. Like, I'm not going to pretend that these games don't have really good music composed by a legendary composer, but I'm also not going to pretend that I like this game's music more than I actually do because as much as I love the music in Final Fantasy IV, it just doesn't hit nearly as much as some of the other Final Fantasy games like Final Fantasy 7 or 10 or I don't know like frick uh 3 even I just really love some of the other Final Fantasy soundtracks and 4 is not really one of those ones that I'm like oh my gosh this is brilliant in every way of the word I don't know I think Final Fantasy IV has a really good soundtrack, but for me, it's still just a 7.5, so 
kind of sad. I mean, it's obviously really good. It sets the tone of the game, which isn't my favorite. All right, art and graphics, 8.5. Love the 2D and 3D versions pretty much equally. They look really good. Any game that, like, actually, I'm like, wow, that looks good, it's an 8.5. Any game where it has a beautiful artistic direction or realistic, like, really realistic graphics, like a 9 or a 10, obviously, you know what I'm saying? 8.5 is just like, wow, it looks perfect, but it's not, like, too special, you know what I'm saying? So I think that's exactly how I feel about Final Fantasy IV the After Years. I don't have too much to say. It's not like a Persona 5, a Sea of Stars, even a Final Fantasy Dimensions 2. I love all those graphics, but, yeah, it's still really good. Alrighty. Next is the characters, which I'm going to give a 10 out of 10. This is one of my favorite RPG character t casts of all time. I mean, there's 22 of them. So many of them beloved characters from the original game and so many new characters that are pretty well developed, even though the story that surrounds them are rather boring. We get our old 12 characters, but we also get to see Golbez, Ursula, the Eblin 4 consisting of Sukunowaz and Getsu, Gecko, and Izayoi. We get Theodore, Cecil's son. I might have already said Theodore. My bad. Uh, Harley. We get Kalka and Brina. We get Luca. We get Leonora. We get so many epic characters in this game. And it's my second favorite Final Fantasy cast after Final Fantasy XV, as controversial as that may be. I love the boys in Final Fantasy XV, but I love the cast in this game. And I just think the original Final Fantasy IV cast was already perfect. And this is more than perfect. It just is perfection plus a couple of new characters. I love all the characters in this game. And this, if the rest of the game were as good as the characters, this could have been one of my favorite games of all time. But sadly, that's not the case. All right, let's move on to the customization system, which I'm going to give an 8 out of 10. So Final Fantasy IV After Years is not really extraordinary at first glance. I mean, when you look at it, it's like Final Fantasy IV PSP. You can change your characters, and each character just has their own stuff. I mean, yeah, there's like 22 characters. I mean, they have so many things, and it's not just white and black magic and ninjutsu, kind of like the original like Final Fantasy IV games. But, I mean, like... <laughs> well, I mean, this game doesn't have augments or anything either. Like, it doesn't have all the Final Fantasy IV magic. But, like, when you really look at it for the first time, you're like, wow, Final Fantasy IV, Final Fantasy IV the After Years is just another basic ATB system. However, there's two things that stand out that add to this customization system. First of all is moon phases, and two are bands. So, first of all, the moon phases are fantastic throughout the entire game, with the different phases buffing or debuffing the following four categories, physical attacks, white magic, black magic, and special attacks, as well as debuffing its opposite. So some moon phases will buff your white magic, but decrease your black magic, or vice versa, and physical attacks, and special attacks, and vice versa. So you get a lot of strategic depth here, because it really makes you consider, should I use my strongest ability, even though it might be weaker because of the moon phase, or should I resort to something that aligns well with the moon phase? And yeah, you can sleep at any time and it changes the moon phase, but you can't just do that during dungeons. So sometimes you really have to change up your strategy mid-dungeon, which I think was awesome. I think more games could benefit from something like this, some sort of moon phase or something. That's really cool. But really what makes this game shine are the bands, which are basically like techs and uh, chrono triggers. It's like each band can dish out massive damage and their combination moves that change the tide and tempo battle. There's so many awesome ones like Makeshift Cannon, Final Fantasy, which is like literally the original Final Fantasy IV characters coming together, Advent Phoenix, which is Edge and all the Evelyn IV, and of course the most notorious one, Vibra Plus, which is just absolutely busted, and it's Cecil and Theodore. It really actually completely breaks the game. But I mean, I would have... 
this I just ha I have this system at an eight instead of a nine or ten because I mean as much as the moon phases and bands add a lot, it's not like there's actually a customization system here like that you're going into the menu tweaking your abilities and stuff. It's not like a materia junction or augment system or whatever. And also the bands are awesome, but you don't really get to see a lot of them very much because again the crystals chapter is too short. And bands are really not that powerful. They're not super well balanced, so a lot of times you just have absolutely no interest in using them, which is really sad. So I love the game's ideas, and I want more games to have ideas like this, but that doesn't necessarily mean that this game is doing a great job in um, conveying these ideas. So I think it's really good, but it could be so much better. All right, let's move on to the side quests in Final Fantasy IV, The After Years. And I'm going to have to give the side quest, side quest category a 4, which is kind of embarrassing. But they're not horrible. They're just mediocre and so few and far between. There's tail collecting, which is already in the first game. Um, there's a couple of mid-super bosses. There's a side quest in the Troy Club where you basically just pay money for a green tail. And there's challenge dungeons. Challenge dungeons are cool. but um, So tail collecting is basically glorified grinding. Same with the Pollum's membership card. The challenge dungeons are really fun to utilize your characters out of the main story and push them to the limits in battle and experiment with bands and stuff. But unfortunately, this was only a feature in the 2D versions for some dumb reason. Probably because they didn't want to make them in full 3D. But um, the challenge dungeons are fun. And they offer some fun super bosses. I mean, sorry, they don't offer a super boss. Sorry. There's also super bosses on top of the challenge dungeons. And the super bosses are really the best side quest. Because you get the different super bosses that challenge your party to their limits. And I think that the best part about this is that both the versions are worth playing. Because they both have different super bosses. I mean, it's annoying that there's those differences. But also it makes both versions worth playing some good super bosses. However... As much as I like super bosses and I like my good old um, challenge dungeons, I don't think either of these are really close to good enough to put this score any higher than a 4. Because there's so little side quests here and there's too little too late. So yeah, there aren't these aren't good side quests, but I've seen worse in video games. And yeah. Alright, Final Fantasy for the after years locations i hate to put the score so low but it was just a given in my eyes that this would be one of the most low scoring locations in all of rpg history because more than 90 percent of the locations in this game are just derivative copy pasted versions of their dungeons in final fantasy 4 and they just come back here with little to no changes new locations can be counted on one hand a deeper level of the Adam and Al Grotto and Seador's Tale, the Adam and Al's Forest and Yong's Tale, the Impact Crater and Edge's Tale, the Tower Trials and Palm's Tale, the True Moon and the Crystal's Tale. I have to admit, the first these locations, the first two of these locations sucked. All the Adam and Al stuff was just so boring. So that brought the score down low. And with only three new, slightly meaningful locations, I couldn't give this a high score. I mean, as much as I love the idea of Paul teaching Leonora, the Tower of Trials wasn't necessarily like super special or anything. Impact Crater was neat story wise, but it wasn't like a groundbreaking area, and I barely even remembered it existed until I looked it up for this review. But the only really new area that I really liked was the True Moon, since we already knew of its existence. The True Moon and the Red Moon, and we just never got to actually go onto the True Moon. So I like that we were able to go onto this different moon in Final Fantasy IV, the After Years. I mean, this and the True Moon is one of my favorite areas in the Final Fantasy IV duology. So like, I really like it. And uh, the True Moon allowed for a bombastic finale that ended this game's otherwise me this under otherwise mediocre game with a bang. But I like the True Moon. This game's dungeons are pretty dang derivative. And, I mean, I'm not going to say that it's horrible because, I mean, these dungeons are still well designed from the original Final Fantasy IV. But when you just copy-paste dungeons, that, for the most part, that's just really lazy. Alright, so next is our final category on this list. And that is going to be the quality of life, which I give a 6 out of 10. So there aren't any nasty glitches or mistakes in this game. Um, the game wasn't, like, slow or dragging on or whatever. But, so... 
I do have some points to take away from this, though. The first point is that its balancing is out of whack. Because it just makes you use certain characters at certain times. And then other characters just suck. And it completely gets rid of all idea of fun customization. Um, on top of that, characters like Cecil, Cal Cabrina, and Leonor need an obscene amount of catching up to be worth using. And in 2D versions, you can actually lose characters like Cal Cabrina, Golbez, and Evelyn for They can literally die. And you can replay these tales. But like, if you don't know, you don't might not know that you can actually heal these characters. And you might just save over and think that you did it perfectly, even though you didn't. And that's just stupid that that's a thing. And another thing that I think is bad is, again, just the backtracking through the old areas. Any game that really, like, is centered around backtracking as an idea it just doesn't work. I mean, they're, like, backtracking through previous areas worked in, like, Final Fantasy X-2, because, I mean, that, I didn't like that game, but, like, I'll give it credit for using the previous areas from Final Fantasy X really well. Because it just, there's a new life, like, it doesn't feel the same, it's wholly different, and as much as Final Fantasy X-2 is a horrible game, in my opinion, and way worse than this game, uh, Final Fantasy IV, the after years, I think that a certain category did really well in was backtracking through previous areas, but having more unique interactions in those areas but in Final Fantasy for the after years it's basically just copy pasted while I initially wanted to only keep that flaw in the dungeons portion it's just such a huge issue that it also needed to be here also the final point is taken off because there's a point of no return and you can't just casually go back to the planet which is dumb because like if you're going to give the players a whole the whole world of Final Fantasy 4 again with all these new characters like, at least let them explore it. Let them visit the old locations, because you already have the assets for them, so why not? Anyway, my last thing to note before we move on from the quality of life section and into the verdict is that the final dungeon was made much shorter than the 3D version, which some people say is a quality of life improvement. Some say it's a downgrade. Personally, I'm in between. I just, I, I really would rather say it's a positive, though. I really do like the... Uh, like huge final dungeon because it incentivizes using all these different characters so i would say the 3d version is worse in my eyes for a couple reasons but mostly for that reason but i mean this game has some severe problems i mean but it's still very polished free of glitches it just has problems that really annoy me specifically so i'm going to give this a 6 out of 10 all right so what's the verdict for final fantasy for the after years I'm going to give it a fun factor of 6 and an overall score of 67%. I enjoy Final Fantasy IV The After Years enough to say good things about it and to recommend it to fans of the original. However, that doesn't mean that it isn't by far the most derivative game in the whole series. Without the proper pop to distinguish it from its far superior predecessor, it feels like more of the same yet worse. While I absolutely do not regret playing it 100%ing Final Fantasy IV The After Years, I will never pick up this game again to play it. I just don't understand why I would do so unless Final Fantasy IV The Original like spontaneously ceased to exist and I just needed these characters back in my life, which would never happen. But this game is a worthy addition to the Final Fantasy Library. I'm glad it exists. It's better that it exists than it doesn't, obviously. I mean, I still give it a 67%. I don't give like a 2% or something. I still think this is a solid enough game. And it can truly be recommended to Final Fantasy IV lovers. And I'm a Final Fantasy IV lover, so I mean, yes. And yeah, so definitely play this game if you liked Final Fantasy IV. It might disappoint you, but you might also love it, so I'm not really sure. Thank you all for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to check out the Final Fantasy IV review. If you haven't done that already, uh, feel free to join any level of Patreon to help support the channel or you can uh, click one of the affiliate links if you're planning on buying this game anyway you might as well buy it from us and help support the channel and of course we are going to be making more of these reviews in the future and we already have some so I have reviews for Final Fantasy 1, 2, 3, 4 and of course I'm going to review all of them so thank you all for watching this video and have a fantastic day. Peace out RPG nerds.